The idea of a fleet submarine, whilst it arose in World War I, was not limited to the Royal Navy. The US Navy had tried, and initially failed, to produce the type as well. Although in their case the problem was dual coupled engines leading to excessive vibration, not randomly sinking themselves as with the K class. While this initial US attempt, the T class, was still building, Congress had ordered another nine fleet subs. These would go on to become five only really tangentially related submarine classes in the immediate post war period where the lessons of World War I from the British, US and German perspectives could all be accounted for. But today we're just going to look at the first three of these nine. The problem with the nine subs authorised in 1916 was that they technically needed to be laid down by mid-1919, and most of 1918 had been spent arguing about the design, the main problem being an eternal tail chase where adding power to get a sub design up to fleet speed at least 21 knots, made the submarine bigger, which in turn meant it displaced more, so it needed more power, which made it bigger again, and so on and so forth. Most of the designers really, really did not want to follow the K-class steam power route, but it seemed that that was the only way you were going to get the energy density needed to break 20 knots. And if you managed to do that, there was a separate challenge. Above that speed, a submarine needed a progressively more and more ship-like outer hull in order to reach and survive the high speeds on the surface, but the more ship-like the hull became, the more this was to the detriment of underwater performance. Design efforts were paused in late 1918 in a hope that some of the advanced German submarines, which could now be examined, might offer a solution. And this seemed to be the case in the form of a new drivetrain solution. By separating surface running and battery recharging, you could have a smaller auxiliary diesel engine, or engines, which existed solely to charge the batteries or to run the sub at slow speed when the generators were connected directly to the motors. This meant that your electric motors could be optimised for long endurance low speed use and thus become somewhat smaller. This, of course, saved space, and the discarding of the limitations of electric motor technology for the main diesels meant that these larger engines, which could now drive the propellers directly when surfaced for high-speed runs, could be much more powerful, as well as significantly larger, than previously. The engine rooms would, of course, still be somewhat larger than previous subs, because there were more engines in them, but a design was quickly thrown together and just as quickly ran into trouble as trying to get the smallest hull wrapped around the biggest engines turned out to be quite the challenge, not helped by what exactly the most powerful available diesel engine was happened to be almost constantly changing. A reprieve in laydown date allowed work to continue, with the final result having four torpedo tubes forward and two aft, each equipped with a single reload, along with a single five-inch deck gun. The bow was moderately shaped in preference for surface sea keeping. The power plant consisted of a pair of 2,250 brake horsepower engines used for surface running and 2,000 brake horsepower engines which could operate the generators to charge the batteries or to directly drive the sub via the motors. With a designed top speed on the surface of 21 knots and a submerged speed of 9 knots. They were supposed to displace 1,900 tons when surfaced but ended up somewhat overweight at just over 2,100 tonnes, and added about 400 tonnes to this displacement when submerged. Unfortunately, a combination of being overweight and various issues in syncing up all the power from the various engines, as in theory you could link the output of the electric motors and the big diesels, meant that in practice a top speed on the surface of just under 19 knots was actually more realistic, and an underwater speed about a knot slower than desired was the result of all this as well. The sea keeping efforts of the bow also unfortunately turned out to be not a particularly great success. If anything, the extra weight of metal forward seemed to weigh the bow down, which was the exact opposite of what they wanted. Some weight saving measures, such as swapping out the 5 inch gun for a 3 inch in the late 1920s, ended up having fairly little effect. With all subs laid down in 1921, V1, V2 and V3 commissioned in 1924, 1925 and 1926 respectively. 
At the start of the 1930s, the US subnaming system was overhauled and the submarines became the Barracuda, Bass and Bonita, respectively, with hull numbers SS-163, 164 and 165. With other, significantly more reliable, submarines coming online in the late 1930s, all three were decommissioned in 1937 to free up the almost 90-strong crew per sub for service on somewhat better craft. But they were still sitting around in late 1940 in mothballs when it was clear that war was going to arrive sooner rather than later, and so they were brought back into service to help guard the Panama Canal, which freed up other longer distance and more capable subs for work overseas. By the end of 1942, though, even this was seen as unnecessary, and they were brought back into dock, stripped of their weapons and main engines, and converted into cargo submarines using only their smaller diesels and electric motors for low-speed runs. Having finished all this work, somebody then realised that the US really had very little use for cargo submarines, and so they were instead sent off for use in the training role for the rest of the war, with Barracuda and Benita sold for scrap in 1945, somewhat before the war ended, and Bass was used for target practice around the same time to test the new acoustic homing torpedoes. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.